Good morning, sisters and brothers from around the world. Welcome to Morning Meditations. I am delighted to serve as your host today for your ministry. I am Jacqueline Coleman. We celebrate the dawning of this new day. We celebrate a new day in a new week. We celebrate the graduations of J. Gianni Palmer and Aubrey Richardson's members of this meditation team, members in the movement and in the ministry. We celebrate, we celebrate Mother's Day, all that love we celebrate. We celebrate the first year anniversary of your ministry. We celebrate the leaderships, yes, of the district who has been feeding us last week. And this week, as we celebrate Pastor William Lamar IV, who will grace us on Friday, and then Dr. Dana Williams on Thursday of this week, Mrs. Annette Calhoun on Wednesday, Elder Johnny Calhoun on tomorrow and today's worship leader. She is a fifth generation AME, a preacher's kid. She's a retired Air Force officer. Thank you for your leadership. A former first lady of Potomac and Capital Districts. She's a mom to teenage son, Jared. She is a member of the Sarah Allen Missionary Society, the Love and Peace Unit. She is a member of the Seniors Club, the Prayer Circle, and the Cradle Roll. And she's also a committee chair for Boy Scout Troop 24. It is my joy, my honor to present to us this morning our sister in Christ, Michelle Stevenson Harvey. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Jackie, for your kind words. Good morning, Metropolitan family and friends. Preparing for this meditation brought me so much joy. I encourage you to step out on faith and enjoy this experience. Before I start, I would like to thank Pastor Lamar for the invitation, Brothers Palmer and um, Bonner, Sister Jacqueline Coleman and Sister E.L. Challenger for all their hard work in making our daily meditation run smoothly. I will begin with Psalms 25. It's the Psalm of David in which he pleads to God to teach him his path. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your way, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your mercy and love, but they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his way. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. 
Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my afflictions and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me? Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O oh God, from all their troubles. I'm going to focus on Psalms 25, verse 4. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. When I was 13 years old, my father was taking us to revival at Macedonia AME Church in Charleston. It's right across the street from Mother Emmanuel. My father was the pastor, and, his, and this church is where I discovered so much about me and God's expectation of Christians. It was a Monday evening in March. During revival, you don't have to um, get home until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. For some reason, I wasn't feeling this. So I decided to rebel. I said, Daddy. I don't think we have to go to revival. I don't believe in God anyway. All I heard was complete silence. I knew I had crossed the line. I sat back to avoid the backhand smack that I thought that would be coming. My dad was very calm. He said, you all can choose three days to go to revival this week. Michelle, I think you need to go every night. Ooh, Miss Goody Goody Two Shoe has put her foot in her mouth because she has brain fever. I always loved going to church, so I'm not sure why I said it. I didn't mean it. I always believed in God and Jesus, but I really was uncertain about the Holy Ghost. Earlier that year, I read a book called, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. I was drawn to the book because my first name is Margaret. I've since discovered that the book dealt with a 12-year-old girl who was a product of a Jewish father and Christian mother. They decided to raise her without religion and wanted her to decide her religious affiliation once she got older. It was also about her coming of age. The book is actually banned in many places where people have attempted to do so. But the funny thing is the only thing I remembered about the book is how she would always talk to God. Her talks were nothing like the prayers I learned, but I started talking to God the same way. He became my constant friend. I would talk to him and ask him things. I would tell him things that was bothering me things that I dare not ask or tell anyone else. One of the things that I would talk to him about was the Holy Ghost. I thought people were playing when they would shout. Well, I went to church every night and I enjoyed every night of revival. I always loved going to church. Of course, daddy told mama and she, she was such an angel on earth. <laughs> gently talked to me and got me to confess that I didn't understand the Holy Ghost. Was I still a Christian if I didn't believe in all three parts of the Holy Trinity? I told her about my talks with God and she promised me that he would show me. I think God said the only way this literal child would learn, the, would learn to believe in the Holy Ghost is for it to indwell within her. So every night they asked if anyone wanted to turn their life over to Christ. I was never ready, but I felt safe with my decision as I sat beside my mom. Well, on Friday, I decided to trust when the Holy Spirit came inside of me. Before I knew what happened, 
I felt as, I, as if I had lost control of my body. I was almost in a trance. Afterwards, I knew that the Holy Ghost was real. I now believed in the Holy Trinity and I could give my, Christ, my life to Christ. So it was on Good Friday, 1975, when Jesus lifted me. I continued to talk to God throughout the day. I've since learned the need to be more reverent as I approach the throne. But I will tell you that having a personal relationship with God is the most fulfilling thing that I've ever done. Once you establish that relationship with God, you will hunger to please him. You will thirst for his word and try to be like Jesus. When you go astray, and you will, you know, I'll send nature, the Holy Spirit will convict you. I know that battling my sin nature is essential to pleasing God. When you hear people say Christians can be the worst ones, remember that Christians are sinners saved by God's grace. We are on a faith walk that is made difficult by our sin nature. Satan will work harder to work on us. So we must write God's words upon our hearts and continue to hold onto God's unchanging hand. Father God, I come to you today marveling in your power and your righteousness. We come to you today to ask you to bless and keep Metropolitan members, leadership and families and friends safe today and all days. Bless the AME Church and its leadership at every level. Bless Pastor Lamar and his wife, Dana. Bless this meditation ministry and its leadership. Please keep America and this world safe. Bless and guide President Biden, Vice President Harris, and all our world leaders. Pour into us, pour into us a stronger hunger to please you. Father God, please give us patience and understanding as we relate one to another. And Father God, bless my family and especially my son, Jared, as he navigates the teenage years. Prop us up on every leaning side and strengthen our faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.